Welcome to a subject, a care and maintenance part of my chores that I so enjoy doing for the orchids and that is flushing. Flushing for me is much more fun of course in the summer when everything is warm and any mistakes I might make it's much more forgiving and things will dry out in due time. Whereas in the winter, flushing is not as forgiving, especially if you are growing indoors in a not controlled environment and are dependent on any temperatures or somewhat airflow that you have surrounding your orchids while they're being protected from any temperatures outdoors that they cannot tolerate. So flushing is important for organic as well as inorganic media and for mounts as well. However, today my examples that are on the left here, they are all in pots. The reasons I'm going to be mentioning, the examples I'm going to be pointing out, they will also apply to mounted orchids, not including when you're talking about pot bound. It is important, of course, to try to avoid sharing water whenever and as often as possible. Sometimes that is not an option for many, many reasons. Normally, I work on the staging area to the left where I've got the candidates for today already lined up. But you can see there's orchids underneath. They should not be affected by the amount of water I'm going to be pouring through these pots. Hence, we are over to the south side where there's a little table that I have that has a covered surface. And there we can go and play and splash with some water and talk about examples. My absolutely gorgeous Neophoenicia falcata, Vanda falcata, does not need to be flushed today but she is a beautiful sight right now while I talk about airflow. You can see I have a lot of it at the moment and that is what's going to be of great help if I make a mistake, if I get too heavy handed, if water gets into the eyes or swelling nodes at rhizomes where a new growth is starting, at least this airflow is going to help me get those areas drier quicker and avoid any rot. Speaking of airflow, when we talk about roots needing oxygen, our mind automatically seems to go to the oxygen in the air, the oxygen that we breathe, and we always think that that is what orchid roots need simply because our mind always assimilates oxygen with air. However, water has oxygen in it and especially in a setup of Lekka and self-watering, that is one of the most important factors that we have to put into the pots and by way of flushing, we bring oxygen around the root system. There are many other reasons and I hope this video helps you. I really appreciate your time. Let's go and get these orchids flushed. As mentioned, it's one of my favorite things to do. I feel as though I'm giving my orchids an oxygen party in the pot. You know, oxygen bars and all that are very, very famous and popular. Let's put that into the pots of our orchids. So a very important factor when it comes to flushing is when you have a pot bound orchid. Pot bound, especially in the setup of Lekka self-watering and semi-hydro means that all the gaps within the Lekka have been filled by roots, which is awesome because the orchid is growing well, has a very vigorous root system and well, is in bloom, which is gorgeous. And we like it that way happens to be fragrant too. So I'm sorry if I seem to be rambling on a little bit. I am enjoying this fragrance very, very much. But pot bound means there is no more space in between our media and the roots, meaning that the oxygen exchange is much, much more reduced, meaning we have to get oxygen into that root ball we have to do it probably a little bit more often than we normally would because if we cannot repot and refresh a root ball at the time of having a pot bound orchid, then we have to consistently put oxygen into the pot and tide over for as long as it takes until we see new root growth. Never mind the spikes, when we see new root growth. And when you flush, be abundant about it all the way to the top of the media and just pour and pour and pour. I use about a liter and a half per pot. If you don't get to flushing regularly, like let's say every three days during the growing season and once a week during the winter season, then make sure that you pour twice the amount through the pot. As I'm doing this regularly, I only need to do it once. So now, by way of gravity, we have just pulled oxygen through the pot, through the root system, not just the fresh oxygen from the air that we pulled through, 
but the root ball now has fresh oxygen in it because of the water which also has oxygen in it. So we have to get away from our roots having to have oxygen and all we think and assimilate is air. Water has oxygen in it and especially when it comes to this setup, any sunny hydro setup, it is important for that oxygen to be in the pot. Super important to keep the oxygen going in a pot that has just been repotted. This is my beautiful root ball from the Epicatante Xiang Yu Gold Coast, just recently repotted. And even though there's plenty of airflow in this pot because it's just been cleaned up, put in with fresh lecker, the oxygen exchange is established. But so that the roots stay happy because they've been disturbed, you want to be flushing a recent repot at least every three days for the first month, just to make sure that any roots that were bruised or damaged will still have the same environment, the wet and humid environment, because we're trying to maintain the health of the velamen that was bruised and hopefully get Get away with having disturbed the orchid. A fresh repot cannot be ignored just because we have cleaned up the root ball. Sticking with the theme of a fresh repot, you also need to keep flushing because the debris will be flushed out of the pot, especially if we've created that new clean environment and created more space in between the leka and roots with new root growth, etc. Every repot there is damage, there's debris, whatever is bruised will stay in the pot and perpetuate a problem that isn't there when you potted the orchid up into the fresh media. Abundant flushing as well every third day after a repot is important because it will push any little bits and pieces of anything that has died out of the pot and keep the climate of the pot healthy. This is my Lelia Pacavia. We had no problems cleaning up this root ball, which was much needed. But when I got around to flushing her again three days after the repot, I lifted the mask up and oh boy, was there a stench of decay, which had me concerned only for about two days because I flushed her abundantly. You can see I'm putting in two jugs of water because I am flushing out all the decay. On the second go around with my flush, after being so abundant about it, the smell was much more reduced. And then the third flushing go around, there was absolutely no smell at all. So there's two factors. Make sure that you keep on flushing your repots because of debris and not rest on the laurels because you've only just repotted the orchid. Everything is fine in the pot. We have to keep the roots healthy and happy in any pot, especially during the growing season and if they're growing new roots. At the beginning of the video, I briefly touched upon having to flush during the winter, especially if your conditions are not controlled. Do not stop flushing during the winter. In organic media, the velamen characteristics are accustomed to being dry. In Lekka self-watering or semi-hydro, the velamen has a completely different characteristic and is much weaker, more susceptible to being desiccated if we let our media go dry. So it is important to maintain your flushing routine also during the winter if you are in this media. You have to maintain the wicking efficacy of the media, whichever you decide to choose. And also, if the leka goes dry and our velamen is used to a wet environment, the leka will act as a desiccating agent, so to speak, because our velamen isn't as robust and hardened off because we don't deal with wet dry cycles. Do not ignore flushing in winter at least once a week and do not put anything in the reservoir if you're growing in semi-hydro. Tilt the pot and drain the reservoir as best as possible without, you know, your orchid falling out. And if you're growing with a reservoir in self-watering, keep that reservoir empty as long as the fibers you're wicking fibers are maintained damp that is perfect and you will see you'll only need to do that about once a week maybe every 10 days i prefer to stick to a once a week regimen because you never want the pot to go stagnant we're still talking oxygen exchange we're still talking fresh oxygen in the pot even in winter so just because it's cold and you're thinking your roots are wet 
Well, your velamen is accustomed to wet and we need to respect that and maintain that climate in the pot, which we can do over an extended period of time, even if we're keeping the reservoir empty. It is paramount to focus on the oxygen in the water and that is what we want to keep introducing into our pots even during the winter. So we also hear a lot about the fact that flushing is fundamental to flush out any excess salts that are left behind in the pot. There's a fine balance between fertilizing and fertilizing to the amount that the orchid can absorb, which would avoid this problem. But until we don't understand our orchids well enough, we have new orchids, we don't know how much they're going to absorb when it comes to fertilizer or supplements, it is possible that any salts that accumulate in the pot could be a detriment to the roots, not just on the surface. We can lock out other nutrients if there is a salt accumulation in the pot and we don't want to do that because that creates deficiencies and possible weird growths. Nothing to do with my Sagarig Wax African Beauty, she needs a flush, that's why she's the example. But it is important to make sure that the flushing that we do also eliminates salts. If everything else in your pot is fine, your flushing regimen has to be on point to avoid the salt accumulation. We can eliminate repots. Your orchid may not be recently repotted. Your orchid may not be pot bound. Everything is going hunky dory with your pot. You still need to flush because of the accumulation of salts. If you are in doubt, flush. If you see salt and mineral buildup on the surface of your media, flush. You can soak your pot as a flush as well, but it will not dislodge the minerals accumulated at the surface of the media. Best practice then, if you have that issue, is to pick that media away and put fresh media on top that has no salt accumulation. The Epsom salt soak is very often done to dislodge any excess salts within the pot to then flush it out. And that works in the pot it will not work for the surface of the pot any media with salt accumulation on the surface it will not remove any of those salts because the surface dries out so much faster than what happens in the pot so if you soak with epsom salts and you think you're going to clean out your pot including the surface of your media that is not going to happen not because you're doing it wrong or you haven't put enough Epsom salts into the soak. It means that the surface of your pot is just drying out much faster and no matter how long you soak, that is not going to eliminate any salt buildup on the surface media. This poor orchid is looking at my jug of water and like going, stop talking lady and just flush me. Okay, okay, your wish is my command. So what you've seen me do here right now is that you saw how high the water went. That's because I don't have a new growth at the base and plenty of room for the water to go all the way up and then disappear through the holes at the bottom. Disclaimer, slipper orchids. Do not do this with your slipper orchids. As in, get the water as high as possible to the surface of the media and then let it drain. Slipper orchids have such fine gaps in between their fans. No matter your temperature, no matter your climate, it can happen that that water will never evaporate fast enough for the orchid to not rot out. I have had that problem. I've lost several slipper orchids because I flushed them the conventional way, letting the water rise all the way to the top and letting it drain out. It was the end of my slipper orchids that couldn't handle that amount of water coming up to their fans and even in the summer did not dry out in between the crevices and the joints of the fans. So just take that as a warning. Best thing to do when you flush your slipper orchids is to make a soak and just pour the water just like, you know, an inch or an inch and a half into the reservoir with the mask Close the holes of your semi-hydro pots, soak your media, but do not raise the water level up to the base of your slipper orchids ever. This way you are safe in the knowledge that the roots are in the pot anyway. They're getting a soak and then they get a flush out. If after your soak, then you pour water in, just pour water through and around the edge of the pot. Do not let it rise to the surface like you just saw. That is my best recommendation, the safest way to flush slipper orchids without the, oh my goodness, what happened to her? And even during the summer, be extra, extra vigilant about that. 
Now for the example of dormant orchids in this setup, Lekka self-water and semi-hydro, catacetinic being the most common that we understand that go dormant, and in my case also my Lelia perinii. Now my Cattleya dawiana is not dormant, but she will be here anyway when I talk about dormant orchids or those that are doing inadverted commas nothing during the winter. It is still fundamental to be flushing them. And this applies to inorganic media only, Lekka and self-watering, semi-hydro, whichever. If your orchid is dormant, it does not mean that you do not flush. It is still paramount to make sure the pot stays fresh, oxygen is in the pot, nothing is going stagnant in there. Do not ignore your dormant orchids. As with the regular flush for any other orchid during the winter, they need to have the wicking efficacy of the Lekka intact for when their growing season starts and you're not starting from scratch. Dormant orchids have viable roots in the pot all the time, whether they're just resting or not, we need to maintain the health of those roots. Anyway, like I said, my Dawiana is not dormant. She is a recent repot though, so flushing away. This is like a party for the root system. When the oxygen goes through, when gravity pulls fresh oxygen in, this is a party. Think of it as a pool party for your orchids. <laughs> And in summary, know that flushing is important. It is not a task of part of our maintenance that we can slack on. We may get away with it with some orchids, we may not get away with it with others, but eventually even the orchids that are more robust and seem to be able to handle no flushing, they will struggle and suffer, especially if our media goes too dry in the setups of Lekka and self-watering. The velamen for Lekka self-watering semi-hydro is key. The characteristics of the velamen is what we are trying to maintain, and we don't want to ruin that because it is more susceptible to other influences that could take out a fabulous root system. So those are my highest recommendations. I could probably think of more, but for the most part, these are the most important reasons as to why flushing is important and should not be taken as a step in our maintenance that basically falls into the category, oh, I've got time today. We need to set up a schedule, a rhythm, to stay on top of it so that our orchids will stay healthy, no matter whether you're growing in organic or inorganic media. Hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you so very much for watching. I wish you a beautiful day. One condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.